There are the Greek islands and the Hawaiian islands. And then there are the kitchen islands. No, you won't find them on a map. And you don't need a sailboat to get there, although you may have one in the shape of a sailboat. Or a disappearing island. Think of the TV show Lost. Once upon a time, this little rolling thing was about it when it came to the kitchen island field. Now kitchen islands come in every size, shape, color, and design. Check out the sleek lines of this sexy Italian model by G.D. Cucina. When I saw these uh, designs, I thought I needed to get dressed up. I couldn't come <laughs> here in my normal outfit because this is like high, you know, high fashion. And for those looking for kitchen okay, island mystery, I want to go here. I want to show you my invisible kitchen here. Urban homes may be the place for you. Feels because of the wood and oh my goodness. Yeah, this is an, a moving counter that allows you to oh, have cooking. Oh snap! The ideal house uh, in the early 20th century was five or six rooms maybe with a kitchen that was separated from everything else. Elizabeth Cromley teaches architectural history at Northeastern University. She says kitchens moved front and center when women stepped out of them and went to work. In the 1970s when the walls come down and the kitchen become a more open social space, that's when the kitchen island starts to gain traction. When we first arrived here, there was literally nothing but just a pile of wood and an open sky. When he began renovating this old barn just outside of Winchester, England, architect Johnny Gray's first job was finding the perfect place for the kitchen island. We would center the island in the middle of the space, the idea being that this is the kind of command position or what we call the sweet spot. It's almost like being where the conductor of the orchestra stands. Unfortunately, when you're the cook, of course, you're the orchestra as well as the conductor. Here's my island. Oh my, oh my God. I think this is better than like the Canary Islands, frankly. Johnny Gray designed this Island. kitchen island sure with like Russian that. motifs oh, and lots of levels so for writer Andrew Solomon's home in New York City. I feel like there's that strange thing about kitchens that everyone thinks they should be very stark and functional. And I don't know why functional and stark have to go together. It can be functional and fabulous too. So <laughs> that was what I was going for. Did you pour in the buttermilk? To demonstrate just how functional his fabulous kitchen island is, Andrew Solomon made pancakes with his son, George. It's getting there. I wanted a place that was warm and friendly and that felt like the center of the house. And it was always the center of the house. And then we had a three-year-old. And once you have a three-year-old, there's an awful lot of time spent on eating. I have the brown heart. I know. The brown, the brown heart, heart is very really good. A kitchen just can just be a kitchen, but also it can be a hell of a lot more. For Johnny Gray, the kitchen island is not only the center of the house, but the center of happiness. And he's got sociological studies to prove it. The wonderful thing is that um, if you look at the daytime graph of happiness, the happiest time is between 7 and 10 in the evening. Well, the grain goes right up. And of course, the most likely place for us to be at that time is in our kitchens. So who needs a trip to the islands when you can make a trip to your own kitchen island? <laughs> <laughs>